Hello, Amy here. And today I want to talk about a big issue that I see in the 3D printing community. That is 3D printing reviews. Most of them are often, even not in although not intentionally, very, very misleading. And today I will talk about why they are misleading and how we can fix them and stop accidentally misleading people who want to choose a 3D printer, even if it's your first. So the first issue I would like to talk about, the issue number one, is that the lightning. A prince can look beautiful in a certain lightning and look absolutely like a nightmare in another lightning. This is caused by the way FDM printers work. They lay layers on top of each other. And as you can see, if you've ever tried to find something on the ground, as you shine light from like exactly parallel to the floor, anything rising will cast a huge shadow and be very obvious. Meanwhile, if you point the lights straight from up, you might not see anything, it might just look perfect. Although this is a really bad example, but you get the idea. 3D printers are the same. If you shine a light straight on into a cube, which I hopefully include photos on, it might look perfect. The second you tilt the light a little above, it will start looking like a nightmare. Why? Because the layers, the every single layer that is slightly left or right is starting to cast a shadow underneath the previous layer or underneath whatever, depending on how you're holding it. So lightning is very, very misleading. And I will talk about the solution after I finish talking about the other issues. The second issue that I want to talk about is filament type. Any filaments, especially the ones with additives, for example, this filament. This is a silk filament. I promise you, you cannot make a bad print out of this filament. It is just so good at hiding defects. And I love this, you know, there's nothing wrong with this filament. I absolutely adore silk filaments because they're shiny and they hide flaws. They make everything perfect. Same with matte filaments. But when you are trying to review a printer, please stay away from these things because they are hindering the very thing you're trying to do. Make the prints be realistic and show the flaws and the positives of a print. So for the love of God, don't use silk filaments. Another example of this such filaments are fluorescent filaments or slightly translucent filaments. Certain colors, like white in my experience, can also hide flaws very perfectly. The, another example of this that I can think of is carbon fiber. I will talk a solution to this problem too, but it's pretty obvious. But for the love of God, please stay away from these filaments because I know you're trying to show cute, cool prints because you're excited, but you're forgetting the thing you're supposed to do, which is to help people choose a printer. And you have to be realistic and critical when you're trying to review something and not just show exciting cool prints. And if you're worried about this company not sending you reviews anymore, keep in mind, you're deceiving people. If you're knowing this and doing this, keep in mind, that's very, very unethical thing to do. And also when you are critical and when you are honest, you're usually might or probably are going to make a better bond with the audience and the audience you build might be more slow but they will be the more trusting kind they will trust you more and they will actually appreciate your opinion more other than just you know the type of people who watch video videos on the bathroom or something when they're bored it will be more likely to be the kind of people who are actually looking to buy a printer and they might trust you more in the future too because let's face it if they buy something you recommend and they hate it they're not gonna trust you again or they're not gonna like you again if, <laughs> even though there can be mistakes in the but I mean I'm not gonna go on about that you should be honest another issue I have with reviews is that they never test tolerances not all of them of course but the most I see on YouTube they just show pretty prints and I get it but you should really try to at least do a tolerance test you could do a tolerance test like uh, this one this is one I designed for a very specific cause. I was suspicious, suspicious that my printer had an issue in only one axis, so I printed this. It's a 0.2 millimeter tolerance on two axes. And another thing they should do is to pick their calipers if you don't have one, you need one if you are gonna 3D print. Okay, maybe not if you're only gonna 3D print, but they're very useful tools. Oh, right, this, your camera is not seeing the number, but you should totally test a lot of parts. I will tell in the rest of the video, the solutions part exactly how to do it in my opinion.
Oh, I went on and on about what I don't, why I don't trust reviews and why I don't watch most reviews and why I, you know, never decide based on reviews. But you might be like, well, Amy, what's your solution here? You're just complaining. Well, I might not be the smartest person on earth, but I came up with a solution, a way to kind of standardize reviews. Allow me to explain. And I'm going to move into the first portion of my review kind of solution to fixing this, which is a photo booth. Well, simply, I am suggesting you to pick a cardboard box or anything, even just an A4 paper, and put a light on top from a 90 degrees from above, Put your print in the same place you put the print for every printer, take a photo from like here. Then move that light through to a 45 degree angle and you know, so on. And maybe keep a diffuse lighting, which is your home's turning on every light in your room at night and taking a photo like that. That way you have a fair comparison with every print. To make this even better, you could also include the previous prints of your other printers that you reviewed. You can just simply write it on the bottom to remember. But you could also put a few printers next to each other so people can see the difference between these prints. But the solution is actually very simple. As I said, a photo booth with predetermined lighting, if you are a very, like, if you make huge money off reviewing printers, you could make yourself something 3D printed where it has lights pre-installed and a slot for the print so you can be very accurate with your tests. But I doubt many people would want to do that. But you could do the other one, an A4, just two A4 papers, or even one just lighted into a slot. You can 3D print that in like five minutes because it doesn't have to be big. And simply just put your lights on top and then change the angle in a lot of predetermined angles. That is the lightning solution that I have. The second solution, the filament is very easy. Why don't we just pick a filament? I don't know, anything that doesn't have adhesives or anything, this doesn't have special properties. My suggestion would be something that I have here it's really hard to find branded filament in Iran, which is funny, but I once managed to get my hands on Eason's gray PLA plus filament. And I found out that Eason's gray filaments are a good combination of not being monstrously terrible looking, having okay, good full tolerances, because keep in mind, if you have a sh really bad filament, you will obviously be hindering the performance of that printer by bad tolerances. So my suggestion would be Eason's Gray PLA Plus filament. As you can see, it's good at all, not only showing the flaws but not over exaggerating them. This is mostly for people who still want to attract the audience. I understand that you don't want to show terrible prints. But this would be my first bet if you want something in between. Eason's PLA Plus Gray. This is just something, the only branded filament I could get my hands on, otherwise I might be giving you something else. But I live in Iran, and all we get here is generic non-branded filament. It's kind of terrible, most of them just... The funniest thing is that I left a spool of filament. A week later I came back and it was full of just like this, this much length of filament. Just, just It broke itself apart from just how bad it was. After living it alone, just just tear it itself apart. That's how bad filaments can get here. Although you can just get lucky. It's just a not nice situation here. We don't buy, we don't get to buy many things, good things, because of US sanctions or whatever they are called. But the reason I recommended this film, I'm just telling you, is purely because it's the only actual branded filament that other people can also order that I've found. But the solution is obviously very simple. You don't have to use Eason's Gray PLA, just use something consistent that you can keep rebuying and has no additives is a simple color like gray. Black also can, and black is a very special filament in my opinion. Some height floss and show, some show floss. Gray is a good color. Baby blue, I call it, is a very good color. A lot of times as long as it doesn't have adhesives, you can easily tell on the camera. And you know, I really recommend you just choose the Eason one because it's just something that has been tested before. But that's the filament part. Just use a single filament or maybe just five and compare every printer in the same filament. And for the love of God, avoid adhesive. I like it. I keep saying adhesive. I mean additive. Like filaments with additives in them. As I mentioned a few examples, this just doesn't technically have an additive, I think. But it's a very, it's like it's semi translucent and it's just orange, like reflective orange, that's a little transparent. Trust me, if I show you what this this would look like without this filament, you would be shocked. This looks injection molded. And in another filament, it looks like trash. 
The second thing, just for a reminder on what to avoid, is silky filament. Please avoid silky filament. If you don't want to hurt this poor little bun, it will get sad if you use silky filament in your views. Look at it, it's so cute. How can you hurt his feelings? Let's get to point three. I also hurt my hands. The point three is how to test for tolerances. This is very simple. There are like a million tests on the internet that consist of a circle with a bunch of knobs. Each knob has a number, and that is the tolerance between the parts. Choose only a single test because the way the person exports the test can change how the printer will do on that set test. So just choose a single test and basically keep on trying it and do tell the uh, basically your audience and what part it starts having resistance and what part it needs breakage. Kind of break, what did I say like that? Kind of what part it needs a little of force to break some, some of the basically in, inaccuracies to move. And then usually almost every printer at the tolerance starts being hard to move at first, but then lose breaks free and is easy to move. Do tell your audience what that point is, what number corresponds to that, and what part it starts to fuse. Most printers, really crappy ones without any tuning, will usually stop at numbers 0 0.3 or 0 0.25, 25, 25, yeah. If you tune them, uh, good printers can usually just do 0 0.2 very nicely. And if it's a very good printer, it might be able to do 0 0.15 or 0 0.1. It's almost impossible. I think I've never seen anyone do that one. But yeah. And another test you should do is just measure your parts. Measure your cubes and all that sort of complicated shapes. Though cubes are easier. And basically tell them how far, how much apart they are. But before you do all that, you need to also listen to what I'm going to say next after this one. But before I forget, I also want to show you something else. Get yourself some dowel pins in three and five millimeters. If you don't want to pay, just get a drill bit and measure it with your caliper to see how close the handle, not the spinny part, but the handle of it is. Chances will be that drill bits will be accurate enough for our purposes. But most of the drill bits I get are which are just very close to the actual number, but dowel pins, ow, I almost dropped it, are almost always perfectly accurate from the place I get though. I don't know if it's just me being lucky. Anyway, choose, find an accurate pin. If you don't have one, just subtract the kind of, you know, size differences with your tolerance test. Either design one in Fusion 360 or just download them. A bunch of slots, like the first one, for example, would be a five millimeter circle. The next one would be 5.0.5 millimeter, and the next one would be 5.0.1, and so on. And you keep it, inc you keep increasing it by 0.05 millimeters until you reach, I don't know, 5.5, which is just the most awful printer would be able to <laughs> even do that one. And you, it's easy. You do the same thing as you do with the tolerance. As you keep trying to push it in, at a certain point, it's going to go in with force. Mark that down and tell your audience. Keep going on until it's just smooth as silk when it goes in and out. And mark that point too. And again, tell your audience that mark. And another thing I suggest you to do is do two filaments, two printed parts fitting to each other. So make design two parts that are supposed to slide into each other and just increase the tolerances between them. Make one smaller, smaller, smaller until it can go through the hole. And also tell that to your audience. That part is kind of more like a bonus, but it's nice to do that. But before you do all of this, I also want to ask you to do something, which is if you don't, very unfair to the company. Please tune your printer. It's kind of hard for the manufacturer to trust you know your filament, what filament you're going to use, how exactly you're going to use it. I expect every manufacturer to at least calibrate their E-steps. That's almost, a, I, I honestly think you should do it without that. And if it has issues, then do that because I expect them to calibrate their steps because this is not something that changes as far as I know between every model. But the flow rate, for example, is, is kind of harder and the temperatures are harder to tune for you. So yeah, do please print, uh, print some sort of calibration test. I have one here. What you do is pr basically print a 40 by 40 millimeter cube with no infill, no top or bottom layers and anything. Set the outside and inside parameter speed to the same speed, like 30 millimeters per second, and set your extrusion width to 0 0.4 or 0 0.45, depending on your nozzle. And basically print it, and you measure it. And measuring it is important. 
The way you measure it is to just measure the middle part. Ow. I dropped it. I keep dropping things. You measure the middle part very lightly. You just keep on pushing this, putting the same amount of pressure on the knob. And mine, for example, is 0 0.78. I do that with the other side. And keep going and going. I write down the four numbers, add them to each other and divide them by four. That way I get an average of all sides. And you know, it should be pretty easy to calculate how much you need to increase your, uh, increase your kind of extrusion rate or reduce it to get proper prints. Because if it's over extruding, it's, I can't really blame that on the manufacturer. It's your fault and you need to be fixing that before you test your prints because over extruding can make your prints ugly too. But yeah, please calibrate your E-steps. Preferably make sure retractions are tuned because again, some filaments string more than others. That's, I can't really blame that too much on the manufacturer. It's a nice bonus if they tune it for general filaments, but a lot of the Chinese ones, they don't have the kind of work people, I guess, what do you call it? They don't have people always tuning everything for them because they're trying to be as cheap as possible. So you should pretty much just tune that and maybe share a profile with your audience. That'll be very helpful to them. But yeah, tune your profile before you do all this stuff. Don't be like, hey, I didn't have time to tune this or here or some garbage printer, but don't worry, the garbage knows this because I didn't tune it. That's literally the most useless thing you can say. When you say that, you're saying that my entire review is pointless, don't watch it because I, was, I didn't want to tune my printer. So this tells you nothing. It's literally what you're doing because I've seen so many reviews where the reviewer says, hey, I didn't have time to tune my profile. So here, just that's why it's looking bad. That's my fault. And I'm like, then why are you reviewing the printer? Just tune it, or at least don't review it. Like, this makes your review pointless. Not to be rude, I don't wanna be, I know it's a really hard job. Don't think people just receive free prints and like, wee, let me have fun and do this. It's really hard, trust me. Even making these dumb videos is kinda hard. So give them some slack, but at the same time, please tune your printer before you do that.